Hi folks, uh, these are some more homework problems, chapter 17. This is going to be number 12 through 15. Here goes. An observer stands 25 meters behind a marksman practicing at a rifle range. The marksman fires a rifle horizontally. The speed of the bullet is 840 meters per second and the air temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. How far has the bullet traveled horizontally forward before the observer hears the report or the sound of the bullet? Ignore air resistance and ignore any vertical or downward motion of the bullet. So if you are told a temperature of the air, you're going to need to calculate the velocity of sound on that day. The equation for that is 331 meters per second times the square root of uh, the temperature in degrees Celsius plus 330 uh, plus 273 to put it into Kelvin divided by 273. So this is going to be 331, which is the temperature at zero degrees Celsius. Um, excuse me, the velocity at zero degrees Celsius times the square root of 20 degrees Celsius plus 273 to convert it into Kelvin divided by 273. Now remember order of operations. You have to add, then divide, then square root, then multiply. Velocity of sound on this day when you get through all of that is 343 meters per second. Now here's the physical setup of the problem. We have our marksman who is going to be shooting the rifle um, and the bullet is going to travel forward some distance. Behind this person is going to be the observer and the question is how far has the bullet traveled forward? So this is going to be the distance traveled by the bullet. That's what we want to know. Um, before the observer actually hears the report of the bullet. So how far has sound traveled from the bullet back to the ears of the observer? So in order to do this, um, we're going to have to find first off the time it's going to take for the sound to travel a distance of 25 meters because the listener is 25.0 meters behind the shooter. So find the time for the sound to travel the 25 meters. So we know displacement is 25 meters. We know the velocity of sound on this day is 343 meters per second. We found that right up here and we are going to calculate time. So time is question mark. We know velocity is displacement over time. Sound is going to travel at a constant velocity, so we can use this constant velocity equation. Do a little spiffy algebra. We're going to solve for time. Multiply both sides by t. That's going to cancel. Next thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by v, and I'm going to end up with time is x over v. Now I'm going to put my numbers in. 25 meters divided by 343 meters per second. And I'm going to pick my calculator up, make sure I don't make up crazy numbers. 25 divided by 343. And I'm going to get 0 0.072886. Um, now we're going to round that off to three sig figs. So 0, 0.0, this is a placeholder, not a sig fig, 7 to this around off to a nine. Now what's going to happen with my units? Meters will cancel meters. So I've got meters divided by meters per second, invert and multiply, times seconds divided by meters. Those are going to cancel. This will be seconds. So that's the time for the sound to travel back to the listener's ear. Now the question is, in that amount of time, how far has the bullet traveled forward? Well, we are told that the bullet is actually going to travel at a velocity of 840 meters per second. So the second part of this problem is we know the velocity of the bullet is 840 meters per second. The time it has traveled is that amount of time, and we want to know the velocity, excuse me, the displacement of the bullet. So 
Same equation, velocity is displacement over time. Sound and bullets in the horizontal plane are going to travel at a constant velocity. Do a little algebra, solve for x. So to get x alone, multiply both sides by t. They're going to cancel. x is the t velocity of the bullet, 840 meters per second. Time is 0 0.0729 seconds. Seconds on the top, seconds on the bottom, those will cancel. Multiply that times 840, and I ended up with 61.2 meters, which is a long way, and it always makes me wonder how in the world in the movies can people jump out of the way of bullets. Fascinating, isn't it? Movies are silly, crazy things. All right, number 13. Here's the problem. A saltwater fishing boat is drifting just above the, a school of tuna on a foggy day. Without warning, an engine bike backfires on a neighboring fishing boat one kilometer away. Using 1560 meters per second as the speed of sound in salt water, who will hear the sound first, the fisherman on the boat or the fish in the water below? and how much time elapses between the two sets of listeners hearing the sound. So let's kind of draw this picture so we kind of know what's going on. We have our boat, and here's my fancy boat. We've got fish under the boat, and the little fishy under the boat and the fisherman on the boat. And on a foggy day, some distance, one kilometer is away. Now one kilometer, we, are, we know, is 1,000 meters away. There is another boat back here that its little engine goes bang, and it makes a big noise. And when that engine bangs, the sound waves are going to travel through the air, but because it's in the engine, and the engine has a propeller down under the water, those sound waves are also going to travel the same distance, one kilometer, through the water. The question is, first off, who's going to hear the sound first, the, fir the fisherman or the fish? Well, in the velocity of sound in air, um, at the beginning or the very, very top of your homework assignment, it says, if you don't know the velocity of sound in air, if it's not given, use 343 meters per second. That's at 20 Celsius, and that's a nice number to use. The velocity of sound in water, we're told, in salt water, is 1560 meters per second. So who's going to hear the boat? The noise first? Well, it's definitely going to be the fish. So for part A, it's definitely going to be the fish. The why? It's because of the fact that the velocity of sound in water happens to be bigger than the velocity of sound in air, almost, but not quite, five times faster. So much, much, much faster. Second part of the problem, part B, asks us to do some math. How much time elapses between the two sets of listeners hear the sound? So I'm going to calculate the time for the sound to travel in water, and then I'm going to calculate the time for the sound to travel in air, and then we're going to subtract. So this is a straight uh, velocity is displacement over time, because sound's going to travel at a constant velocity in one medium. Um, we know the displacement is one kilometer, which is 1,000 meters. This, the velocity of sound in salt water, we're given, is 1,560 meters per second, and we're solving for time. So when we go ahead and do our lovely algebra, solving for time, multiply both sides by t, that's going to cancel, uh, divide both sides by v to get rid of that velocity. So time is going to be x over v. So time is going to be 1,000 meters divided by 1,560 meters per second. Grab a calculator here. So 1,000 divided by 1560, I get 0 0.641. What units should be on that? I have meters divided by meters per second. Invert and multiply seconds over meters. These are going to cancel. I'll end up with seconds. So this is time in water. In order to find the difference in time for the fish, 
and the fisherman to hear this, I now have to calculate the time for the sound to go through air. So that's what I'm going to do next, is calculate time for sound to travel in air. So time for sound to travel in air, same exact equation, distance is 1,000 meters. Velocity of sound in air, we were told use 343. Uh, time is my question mark, and time is going to be my 1,000 meters divided by 343 meters per second. Divide, so I got 1,000 divided by 343. I've got 2.915 or 2 seconds when I round it off. But the question is not what these are. The question is what is the difference in these two sounds. So for difference, between the time of the two listeners, 2.92 seconds for air minus 0 0.641 seconds for water, and I get 2.92 minus 0 0.641, and I end up with 2.279, let's round it off, to 2.28 seconds. That's going to be the difference in time between the two listeners. Okay, that is number uh, 13. That's 13. Let's go ahead and do 14. Problem 14 is a quick one. A uh, piano tuner hears one beat every three seconds. So that is beat frequency. Frequency of beats is three seconds. Um, while trying to adjust two piano strings. One string has a frequency of 256 hertz. What is the frequency of the other hurt? hertz? Hertz. Yeah, yeah. What is the frequency of the other string? I can get this. All right. Beat frequency is nothing but the absolute value of the difference between the two frequencies. So if the beat frequency is 3 hertz, and one frequency is 256 hertz, the other frequency will either be 256 hertz minus 3 or 256 hertz plus 3. So my other possible choices are 253 hertz or the other one could be 259 hertz. Those are my other two possible uh, beat frequencies that we could have on my strings. Okay. Oh, fudge. I think I messed that one up. I'm going to stop right here. And uh, yeah, I looked at my notes and I think I messed up 14. I'm going to do 14 again in the next video. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.